Then came the blessed birth, after which the whole world changed. It changed in a way that up to this day, that change is felt. And up to the end of time, there will be people who will be guided by the word of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you look at us, when we look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's life, as I said, we understand revelation. He is the one who brought revelation. We need to know who he was. And his words are known as hadith. We need to know who he was. His name was Muhammad ibn Abdullah, ibn Abdul Muttalib, ibn Hashim, ibn Abdi Manaf. So he was from the clan of Banu Hashim, who fell under Quraysh. So his father's name was Abdullah. His grandfather was Abdul Muttalib. Where was he born? He was born in Mecca. Today, if you travel to Mecca, to Al-Mukarramah, you will notice where Safa and Marwa is. If you were to come out on that side, you notice a large open space where people read Salah. Very soon it's going to be taken into the Haram. Then you will notice a building standing on its own known as a library. It is reported that just there was the birthplace of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was the house of Abu Talib because his father had passed away when he was seven months in his mother's womb. And the father was 25 years old, very young. If you take a careful look at what the historians say, they say Allah took this man away after his seed was planted into the mother of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His job in this dunya was over. His job in the world was over. And he passed away 25 years old whilst Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was seven months in the womb of his mother. And his mother Amina binti Wahab Ibn Abd Manaf, who was also from the similar clan of Quraysh. She says, it was the easiest, the easiest gestation period. The pregnancy was simple. I didn't feel anything. The childbirth was absolutely easy, as though I didn't even give birth. Subhanallah. The most blessed of all creatures was just being born. We want to go into the moment of birth, inshallah, in a few moments. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the death of the father of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina Munawwara. Did you know that? He passed away in Al Medina Al Munawwara. He was gone to Sham and he came back to meet some of his relatives in Medina. And on his way back, he passed away in Al Medina Al Munawwara. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went back there at a later stage in his life. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was born, unlike all the other children. The narrations make mention that when he was born, he came down with his hands, his hands down and his face was looking up to the skies. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Pure, already circumcised and his umbilical cord was already separated. Subhanallah. This is made mention by most of the narrations. Some of them say, that the circumcision was already done. And some say Abdul Muttalib did it seven days later and he had fed a few people in happiness of a grandchild being born. And he had already known in his heart and mind, this child is going to be someone great because so many people had already told him. But they, would, they did not know he's going to be a Nabi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they knew he's going to come and something great is going to happen. Amina binti Wahab, the mother of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when I was expecting Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about to deliver, I saw a light come out of my belly from which the palaces of Sham were lit and I knew that something is happening. And on that day it is reported that the fire that was worshipped by the Persians in Iran was extinguished and they had to rekindle it. Allahu Akbar. And it is reported that some of the idols that were placed on the Kaaba had dropped down on that day. And it is reported that Kisra, the Kisra that was there, his, the, the balcony, part of the structure that made his palace had dropped on that day. And they had to rebuild it. Subhanallah. And this was all signs. These were signs later on, which were only to be interpreted that this man's message was to get across the globe. You know, when someone dies, what happens? After they die, we say, but just yesterday, he said, I might not see you again. It happens to us. 
It's a sixth sense. He did not know he was going to die. But Allah makes him say statements that is a lesson for those who are to come later on. And we busy engrossed him. Did he know or didn't he know? The more important thing, whether he knew or not, is nothing for us. But what is more important is what are you doing now before you get to that condition? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all a good death. So the same applies here. Things happened and later on they were to come to reality. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as we said, umbilical cord separated, already circumcised, subhanallah. He came down looking up to the heavens. And one narration actually makes mention that he was born with his finger up, the one, the first finger, the finger of Shahada. And this was to depict the fact that Allah is one alone. Don't worship anyone else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq and the acceptance to worship him and him alone. And then subhanallah, his mother says, the grandfather Abdul Muttalib loved him so much. He was sitting where the Kaaba was and I covered him with a utensil and sent for Abdul Muttalib to be called so that he would be the first one to see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he came, by the time we looked back at him, that utensil was already broken into two and he was there subhanallah and the grandfather was so happy so happy because the father had already passed away and he made him a man he made him a young boy who was very close to him before i end i need to make mention of one point there are many people of today who have fabricated certain miracles they say this happened and that happened i want to mention two or three of them so that we know there is no need for us to fabricate anything because what is correct is already there and the miracles have already happened. So why should we then fabricate? It only drops the value of the story. I heard one of the scholars say, one of the people say that, you know, at the time Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born, the minaras of the Haram made sajda. But brother, there were no minaras at the time. You need to know that. And then they said, I've heard them say also that the golden stand where Maqam Ibrahim is got up and made sajda. Brother, there was no golden stand at the time. So let's not fool each other. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the mahabba, the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation. Imagine the moment when he came onto the earth, so many things across the globe had happened, which are absolutely authentic, which he makes mention of later on. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us appreciative of the fact that we are part of the Ummah who have accepted all the Prophets. Jesus may peace be upon him. Moses may peace be upon him. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all of them. We respect them and we say may peace be upon them all and may peace be upon us. Let the power of media improve your connection to your deen and make a positive impact on your life. Download the One Islam TV app today and embark on a transformative journey of knowledge, inspiration and spiritual growth.